welcome back to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. My name is Connor Williams, joined by Ollie Hayes. And this is a video just discussion, um, discussing the weight for the decision and the appeal of our points, um, touching on stuff like the, being in the relegation zone and all that. Um, so, yeah, obviously, first things first, the points deduction um, has, has been here for a while now. It's something that we've just, I think, and I mean, how, how do you feel about the appeal? Do you think... Um, are you an optimist here or I personally am expecting nothing so if we get anything it'll be a success that's sort of my mind going into this yeah I, I'm very similar to that I think uh, you know it's it's such an unprecedented, unprecedented situation and it obviously no team has ever had this and ever gone through the appeal process and ever had financial play uh, financial fair play deductions so it's difficult to kind of gauge an opinion on what's going to happen or what I'd be happy with I think you know, I'm like you, I'm a bit of a pessimist. If if we get something back, great. But do I expect anything? Probably not. I think, you know, the Premier League were, were pretty set on what they wanted to do before, you know, any appeal process. So I think, you know, if we do have a good case and we get anything back, I think ever, anything is positive. Yeah, I, I'm a little bit um, worried um, for two things. Obviously, we've been we've been breached the second time as well. But um, the statement sort of said because it's the same thing. The statement sort of read like, well, if we win our appeal, that will be used, you know, sort of, so that will null and void the second charge, which mm -hmm. then makes me think, right? But if we don't win the appeal, what happens then? Because that's what you're banking on us doing is winning the appeal, um, which is a bit daunting in itself. And then the Premier League. Uh, that Masters doesn't seem to be letting letting go. Like that, he's had his meetings, he's had letters sent to him by parliamentary staff, and he still seems to be sticking with it. It all seems very, very, you know, vague, doesn't it? The information that we're getting from the media and what's coming out from the Premier League, it's all, it's all very vague. And you know, that's one thing again that's worrying me because you know, this level of transparency isn't there. So when that transparency isn't there, you, you can't really expect for, you know, the Premier League to go back on their own word and, and you know, reduce sanctions. I think that's one thing that's that's making me a little bit more of a pessimist. And one thing that I did think, which, which was a little bit worrying, was, you know, they'd reduce our points deduction, maybe give us a suspended points deduction, and then just give it as it back with the new charge that, we, that we're getting from yeah. this season. That was That was one worry for me, but... Obviously, I'm not sure on how much that would affect with the with the current appeal and stuff like that. But you know, as you said there, you know, letters from MPs, you know, government regulation wanting to come in, and it's all very, very quiet on that front from Richard Masters. So that's again another thing that's worrying me and 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 giving me a little bit more pessimist pessimism than what I maybe would have had before Christmas. Yeah, that like that's a great point what you said because it's almost like. Um... Even if they say, right, sound, we will give you four points back, which is what people are rumoured to be optimistic about. We'll give you your four points back, so you're only deducted six points. That doesn't mean, like, that still means that we're guilty of a second charge still. And if they come back and go, oh, well, we charge you six, so we'll charge you six again. We've still lost point. We've lost two more yeah. points than we started with. So it's just like, like really, the appeal is all or nothing. If we've got to get them all gone or majority gone. Um, otherwise, you know, anything less than five points back, it's still going to be hit with a second one, which is going to put us in the same place or worse. Yeah, yeah. And like you said, it's the first time. I, I don't know if they will... They, like, they've set a precedent that I don't think they'll be able to maintain, but I don't know if they bottle it on the first yeah. precedential case. Like you know, they're not going to go, oh, we're wrong because it makes them look... Yeah. I think they'll realise it after they've punished us, Forrest and someone else, they'll go, oh, maybe we're being a bit harsh. Which I think yeah, they're yeah. done, the rules are coming in, aren't they, next season to change it? Yeah, and I think it's it's all just the Premier League trying to prove that they can rule their own house, isn't it? And, you know, prove that they can put in effective sanctions to, you know, show to other teams that, you know, this is what the, the punishment will be if you breach FFP and if you breach our rules. And, Again, it's just typical Everton being made into the scapegoat, this 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 guinea pig that's getting <laughs> the most unprecedented first time punishments. And you know, we saw it so many years ago with Umar Nias and that diving ban. You know, no player has been retrospectively banned since for diving. Like it, it doesn't happen. So again, it's just Everton at the wrong end of these punishments. But you know, I, it, it for me just all seems a bit suspicious. I'm, I'm just a little bit worried, and I don't kind of hold any optimism surrounding the situation. 
No, no, I, 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 people I've spoken to on the second, which I, I think they're trying to get the second uh, one in this season as well, which is awful because not just for us, but like you've got teams now who won't know if they're relegated, if they're safe or not till till the end of the season, which, I mean, I know Deitch is a man who goes, you should win every, try and win every game, but some teams will need to know, of, you know, for planning. Um, yeah, yeah. So it just leaves the whole of the bottom half of the league in a limbo, which is also, and fans as well, like who wants to watch it on the final day, like going, oh, yeah. well, you know, the final day could be wrapped and, up in a week. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like football should be won on the pitch and like you should know on the final day if you're staying up or you're going down. You should know if you're getting Europe or you're not getting Europe. Like football should be won and lost on the pitch, not in the courtroom. And I think that's the most disappointing thing for me. It's it's, it's kind of ruining the fun of going to the game you know, chasing Europe, you know, looking at transfer deadline day, even transfer deadline, was it was the quietest it's ever been. And yeah. I think it is just taking that, you know, that exciting aspect out of football because you don't know in two, three weeks time what's around the corner and, and what sanction you're going to be hit with or if you're going to be hit with an FFP charge. I think for me, it's it's just ruining, you know, the integrity and it's ruining the, the fun in football. Yeah, I mean, it's like the VAR, isn't it? When you score nowadays, people wait to celebrate, which is so sad to watch. Like, it's just not what football's made for. But it also, like um, like you said, I just don't think it's fit to put. I get what they're trying to do. Nobody wants to see clubs overspend and go bust. Nobody wants to see that. Um, but if the money's there, like like we're looking at now Newcastle rumoured to be sort of being feeling it. They're the richest club in the world. Surely, yeah. you know, if the money's there, I feel like I feel like there's got to be a better way to cap it than what they're doing. Um, like I know people have said maybe get a wage cap in, uh, which I think China tried and everyone bailed the league very quickly once they did that. Um, but I just don't think this way is, or if they are, be a bit more clear on the rules because I think Everton said, didn't they? They didn't know the stadium costs were going to go added in, mm. and then they did, and it's just all a bit blurry. Yeah, I think that's that's the one thing that I kind of want is maybe like a La Liga system. I think they have like a live finances thing. So if you're a team that's running close to the mark on on financial fair play, you'll sort of be notified and, and then La Liga can sort of give live sanctions. So points deductions, transfer embargoes, things like that. So to stop these clubs going over the mark. So you're kind of working, you know, with the league rather than against them. And I think that's, you know, a... a, a pretty pragmatic approach of of you know football finances i think i'd be quite happy to see that whereas the as you said there it, it's all very vague and there's a lot of gray areas in the premier league's financial regulations and you know i'd just like to see them bring it into the 21st century a little bit and and kind of just give us as fans the peace of mind knowing that you know our club isn't going to be running close to the, the line whether it be administration or points deductions and you know, it, it brings the fun back to football because you can just enjoy going the match and, and watching whether your team wins or loses rather than worrying about who you, you know, who your lawyers, as a, as a fan, you should not know who your club's lawyer is. Like it, it shouldn't, it? it shouldn't be an aspect that you know. So I think- He's got a fan club know. as well and it's mad. <laughs> He's going to games. It's, it's It's unreal. I think that's the one thing for me. It's like, as a fan, you shouldn't know this information. You should just go on a Saturday, watch your team. If you win, you're happy. If you lose, you, you're sad for the week. That's, that's just yeah, how it is. Like, that's how it should be. I shouldn't know what he looks like. He should just be a name. <laughs> like, it's honestly mental. Obviously, as well, relegation. Um, so, I mean, luckily for us, the teams at the bottom uh, struggled early doors um, so we're not you know we're still in amongst it I think last year if we'd had a 10 point deduction we'd have been curtains quite yeah. a while ago um, but Luton are giving it their best go um, and have been quite impressive even some of their losses I think it was Liverpool and City they played well regardless you know the, the result obviously I think they hindered themselves a little bit this this weekend the results went our way this weekend massively um, they did yeah how do you feel on the say now there's no more points deductions it's just us the, the teams around us how are you feeling right now about our chances of beating the drop um i'm quite positive if obviously there's no more points deductions and it is just purely between now and the end of the season who gets the most points i think i'd be very very disappointed if we didn't outscore loot and sheffield united and burnley between now and the end of the season um that being said you know the form 
the, the upturn of form from Luton that does worry me a little bit because they have got decent players and players that are willing to fight for every ball, fight for every point in this league. And, you know, you look at the resurgence of Ross Barkley. Yeah. He's one of those players that you can kind of see that is going to carry them between now and the end of the season. And even Andros Townsend as well and uh, Elijah Adebayo, that they've got decent players in attack and they've also got a, a defence which is willing to fight for every ball. So, you know, that it does concern me a little bit because... You know, it's kind of typical. They were tipped to be one of the the worst teams in the Premier League. You know, break, uh, breaking Derby's points record, and you know now they they, they seem to be hitting a, a rich vein of form and and turning these you know good performances into wins and draws. So, I think I'd maybe look a little bit further up, possibly. I think Nottingham Forest don't look very convincing. They had that little bit of a new manager bounce under Nuno when he first came in. Um, and even Crystal Palace, you know, Roy Hodgson, as we're speaking now, is still in charge at Crystal Palace. That whether that changes between our game on Monday, that it remains to be seen. But you know, for me, they look like they're in free fall. They've got no Mark Gay, they've got no Elise, and they've got no Eze for a number of weeks. So they're a team as well. I'd be looking at and and maybe looking to try and finish ahead. But certainly, the the three that are around us at the moment and the ones that every Everton fan is talking about are Luton, Burnley, Sheffield United. I think. Burnley and Sheffield United, we should be outscoring them. And so I'm happy with my chances surrounding them. But it's Luton for me that are the big worry. And if if they carry on this purple patch, whether we can match it remains to be seen. Yeah, I, I'm fully... Um, I said the other day on a show, I was like Crystal Palace, especially with the three big names missing. Uh, and, it, and also, not only... Um, is it not working out under Hodgson for them, but he's a man that's not very popular. That sort of atmosphere... Um, you know, don't need to tell Everton fans, you know, what happens if you, you know, if you don't like the manager and it gets all a bit gloomy, you know, you don't have to tell us how that affects results. We've seen it before countless times. Um, yeah. The Rafa Benitez era was enough to to know if you're not a popular man in the fans, you're not going to get the results. Um, but our goal difference as well is, um, which you touched on, like it's, it's very, very good uh, for being down there. You know, it's minus six compared to like, you're talking minus teens above us. Um and like minus twenty five and thirty eight from Burnley and Sheffield, which is mental. Um, yeah. so that gives me a bit of hope as well because it could it could all be decided on the last on the last day like it was last year. Um, I hope it isn't, but <laughs> I, I hope it isn't as well. And I hope it isn't. I can't go least, through that stress. <laughs> and it, like I hope it isn't by bloody goal difference either. Yeah. Last I think I as you said do, there. Like... Yeah, as you said there with the goal difference, that's one positive that obviously. It comes with us playing so well from September until, you know, sort of the mid to end of December. I think we limited teams a lot. You know, if we were losing, we were only losing by one or two goals here and there. And I think that's another thing which is positive from the Manchester City game. Maybe Luton might go to the Etihad or Sheffield United or Burnley or even Forest might go to the Etihad and lose 5 6 nil. We've limited them there to two goals. So, you know, you have to look at the the silver linings from most games. And if you are getting beat, just keeping that goal difference quite low. But we've got to hope that we it doesn't go to the final day and it is decided on goal difference because that would be a disaster. I did think that was like, it, it was it was a perfect opportunity to avoid a stat pad in um mm. from City, uh, who also could goal difference could make or break their, you know, success on the top of the table. Um but yeah, and like looking at Luton, I mean, they have got some like the next two games are United and Liverpool, um, and then Villa in the league. So they're three really tough games, um, at a time where we face three games that I'm not gonna say are winnable, but are more fairly fought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'd, I'd say that's fair to say, yeah. I think, yeah. you know, you look at Palace, I'd probably say that's a must win. On Monday, yeah, I think a lot of people in the in the fan base would say it's a must win, and then after that, you have I think it's Brighton away. After that, which again, tough place to go, but we so we showed it at the back end of last season that we can go there and get a result, and I think we do have a relatively decent record at Brighton away, um, and then West Ham at home again, another team that they got battered by Arsenal at the weekend. We we limited Arsenal at home to only one goal, so I think I think it's pretty fair for you to say that it, they are three winnable games and ones that we should be looking for at least a point in in two of them and, you know, a win against Crystal Palace. Yeah. Um, and then Forest as well, they play, although United's in the league, they play, I think we all, do you know, I've got a horrible feeling we all play the same teams. I think we've all got United and Liverpool uh, left and like Brighton. Um, Luton and Forest play each other as well, which is 
Um, not ideal for us because potentially somebody picks up three points there. Best a best case scenario there's a draw, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas our fixtures are a bit more. Yeah, we've got West Ham, then we've got United, Liverpool, um, Bournemouth though, who I don't think we'll have anything to play for by then, by the 30th, um, and then Newcastle away, which is a tough game. Um, so, But there's no easy games in the Premier League, is there, I suppose? There isn't. There isn't. <laughs> um, but yeah, oh, well, yeah, I think I think to to, um, to sort of um, bring it all together, yeah, I tough games I do think we might we hopefully survive um but points wise I'm not expecting an awful lot I'm not I'm kind of just in the mindset now we're in the situation we're in it's probably not going to get any better between now and the end of the season off the pitch in terms of you know court decisions and and things like that and appeal decisions so we can only play with the hand we're and just just try and get enough points to stay above that dotted line come May yeah well Hopefully, mate. Hopefully, that is all we've got time for, though. Thank you for joining me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for thank you for having me on, mate. I appreciate it. Nice one. Don't forget, guys. You can like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and comment down below uh, how many points you think we'll get back, if any. Uh, we look forward to reading them, and we'll see you soon.